Hey guys, welcome back. We have finished Java 8 interview question. Now we have moved to Java Tricky question. This is the third time I'm recording this video because first time I was fumbling, second time uh, I didn't record, and third time is this. Let's see. So I'll go a little bit fast. I'll not read how I used to read. So basically, is there any difference? A is equal to A plus B and A plus is equal to B. Yeah, there is a difference. How? What is the difference? So if we are adding two integer variables, right? Like of type of byte, short, int, we'll first convert it into int and then add and then that, uh, okay. So basically first we'll convert and then add. But the plus equals to operator, right? We will, the uh, uh, operator, right? The, it, it will implicitly cast the result of an addition to the variable we are going to store it. The second question is, what will happen if you put a return statement inside a try catch block or you put a system.exit in that? Uh, will finally block execute? So in the case of return statement, the finally block can execute, will execute. In the, it, it, like, uh, consider uh, the system.exit, the finally block will not execute, okay? Uh, now the expression 1.0 divided by 0.0, .0 what, will it, what will it do? So it will actually give you double dot infinity instead of a compile time error or an arithmetic exception. Because double has this uh, standard, it will give you a hell lot of things like NAN uh, minus 0, 0.0 can also be the place. While in, in integer, it, will not, it cannot happen, right? So yeah. Now, can we use multiple main methods in a multiple classes? We can do, but when we are writing, calling the JVM, right, with the, with the class name, well, we call that main method. So only that JVM will only respect that main method and it will execute that. So it's okay. There's no problem with it. Uh, does Java allow you to override a private or static method? We all know that there is, we cannot override a static method or a private method. Even if we are doing a over, uh, override of that, we can actually create the same method, same name, same parameter for static method. It's still called a method hiding for, but for, Private method, we cannot even see that in the subclass, right? Because it's a private method. So you have to create a new method with the same name. It's maybe called a method hiding or creating a new method uh, in whatever way you want. Now, what, ha what happens when you put a key object in the hash map that is already present? So you know that all these objects will be in the buckets and hash map will have a key will have a hash code. So even if you put a, a key which is, which is already present, it will replace the value and because it is having the same hash code it will go to the same object and it will rewrite the value of the object right now how can you make sure that n threads can access n resources without deadlock the first thing for this is you need to know what is the threat safety and how it is occurring and all those things what is a deadlock what is the race condition so to do it what you will do you will acquire the thread in the order you know in one order and you will release it in a different order altogether. In this, in this manner, you can actually use it. Now, uh, this is uh, how can you determine if JVM is 32-bit or 64-bit Java program? You can use this uh, code, right, to check. Or you can do the system.get property to determine if what thing it is. And then what is the right type or data type to represent money? I think you need decimal. So big decimal can be the right data point. Can we, uh, how can you do multiple inheritance in Java? Uh, we have discussed this in Java 8. We can use interfaces to take this help and you can call the super method uh, for whichever interface you want to do, right? Is plus plus operation thread safe in Java? No, it's not because it will do multiple operations. First, it will read the value, then it will increment the value, and then it will store it back into the memory. So definitely it's not thread safe. It, it's not an atomic operation. How can you access a non-static variable from a static con context? We can do it, uh, but only thing is we have to create an instance of the object and then only we can access. Otherwise we cannot do it, okay? Now let's say there is a method that throws null pointer exception in a super class. Can we override it with the method that throws runtime exception? Okay, we can throw super class of runtime exception in a overridden method, but we cannot do the same if it's a checked exception. Okay, 
so the concept is we can throw superclass of runtime exception in an overridden over method, but because it's a checked exception, we cannot do it. We can do it for runtime, we cannot do it for uh, compile time. How can you mark an array volatile in Java? So uh, the problem is it's a multi-threading and if we are marking an array word in Java, it will only mark the reference of that. So if one changes, thread changes the reference variable to, po to point to another array, then it will provide a volatile guarantee. But if multiple threads are changing the individual, then it cannot. Okay, so the, if you're marking an array volatile, it will only make the reference. So if one thread is doing it, it's okay. If other threads are doing it, we cannot. And what is a thread local variable in Java? Thread local variable in Java, right? It is restricted to a specific thread. It's kind of own copy of the variable, which is not shared across multiple threads. So Java provides this thread local class, uh, which will su uh, like support this thread local variable. And to achieve the thread safety, we can do so. It will do. It will avoid memory leak, and it will always have a good to remove thread local variable once the work is done. Now, what is the difference between sleep and wait method? See, sleep means it will give you a time you sleep for eight hours. Wait means you stay there till the time I say that you cannot uh, resume. Simply, you are in, the, in a bed. You have, you have slept for eight hours, but you are. If suppose you want to get a loo or your partner is in the loo, right? You have to wait for him to get out from, and you will stay in the bed for some time, right? So that's what. Can you create an immutable object that contains a mutable object? Okay. So it is possible. We should not share the reference of the mutable object since it is inside an immutable object. That's the only thing, right? Okay, then bye bye. I think this is the last question. We'll do another questions tomorrow, I think.